Greetings viewers, welcome back to the Car Doctor Studios. Today we've got a quick tip for owners of certain GM products experiencing various EVAP system codes and or difficulty filling the fuel tank. Watch this quick video and I'm going to help keep you on the road. So if you have a GM product and you're experiencing various EVAP codes such as P0446, P0442, P0455, or a P0449 set, and uh, perhaps you have difficulty filling the fuel tank, as in the fuel pump keeps uh, cutting off at the tank before it can be uh, properly filled, uh, then you may have a clogged or faulty fuel evaporative system vent control solenoid valve. There is an updated valve assembly and wiring harness available from GM uh, to correct this issue. There is a technical service bulletin relating to this issue. Uh, bulletin number 09-06-04-028 Delta uh, outlining the fix for this problem, which basically entails replacement of the uh, evaporative system solenoid valve assembly, the hoses connecting to that, and installation of a remote filter uh, to prevent water and dirt from entering the valve and thus clogging the vent side of the system and reducing the ability to fill the tank properly and also setting evaporative codes after it fails the evaporative test. So uh, it's a relatively quick fix. You can probably do it in under two hours uh, without the use of a hoist. You will need to drop the spare tire. You'll need to drop the fill tank filler pipe assembly down a little bit and drill a small hole in that for mounting the uh, remote filter. Uh, so it requires on this application, which uh, the procedures and part numbers are identical for 07 through 2010 Cadillac Escalade models, Chevrolet Avalanche and Chevrolet Suburban 1500s and Tahoes, uh, also GMC Yukon and GMC Yukon XL 1500 models. Uh, this also covers uh, and is similar to many other GM products experiencing the same condition. However, the part number and exact procedures may differ slightly. Uh, so refer to the technical service bulletin or refer to uh, your D GM dealership for proper part numbers and technical service bulletin for that particular vehicle, which will outline the exact repair procedure. Uh, but again, this should cover 07 through 2010 Cadillacs, Chevrolets, and GM uh, SUVs. And uh, the part numbers required will be a part number 2348127 vent kit and the 1925763 electrical harness. And that'll adapt the new solenoid valve to the existing electrical harness and facilitate repairs. So on this one here, we're just going to start and follow the recommended procedure that's outlined in the TSB, which starts with basically uh, lowering the spare tire and, like I said, uh, lowering down the fill pipe and, uh, and then removing the old valve and disconnecting it and, uh, and then installing the new stuff and drilling a small hole to mount the, the filter and all that. So I'm just going to outline that procedure and uh, you can watch along and follow along. Okay, first you want to make sure and shut everything off and remove the key from the vehicle. And then you need to open the fuel door and access the filler pipe fasteners. All right, first you want to open the fuel door and then access the two Torx screws, 30 millimeter Torx and one little plastic fasteners which need to remo be removed uh, to detach the fill filler pipe housing. Use my little retainer 
clip pliers to remove the plastic retainer. So now that that's loose, uh, I want to go and uh, remove first the spare tire uh, jack handle that will be required for lowering the spare from the vehicle. Uh, that on this avalanche is stowed on the right side uh, compartment in the bed of the vehicle and you usually need to unlock that with the key and remove your tire iron and the jack rod that will be necessary for removing the or lowering the spare tire. So once you get your tools, go ahead and remove the spare tire lock, which covers the access to the spare tire crane. Once you've removed the lock, install your uh, jack handle and lug wrench and lower the tire from the vehicle. In this case, I didn't completely remove the spare tire, just lowered it enough to get it out of the way so that I could access the valve. So first I disconnect the electrical supply to the valve, the little two wire uh, connector. And then I remove the bolt that attaches the bracket to the frame member. Uh, this case, it took a 13 millimeter. I remove that bolt. And then I remove the quick disconnect, the white connector on the vapor canister side uh, of the hose uh, by depressing the little white retainer clip with the regular screwdriver and then pushing it off. Uh, and then I pulled down the, I accessed and pulled down the fill pipe and cut the four little tie wraps that secure the filter end of the old EVAP valve to the fill pipe area and then I completely removed the EVAP valve from the vehicle. Now drill a seven millimeter hole in the fill pipe housing as shown. Now install the updated valve assembly and hoses, route them properly, and reinstall your bracket bolt. Now you want to install the updated wiring harness adapter by first clipping one end onto the vehicle side of the harness and then uh, attaching the other end of the connector onto the updated valve assembly and depressing the red button to secure um, the connector to the new valve. And then you want to secure the harness with the small little metal clip to the uh, back side of that uh, frame member. Now route the updated vent solenoid piping to the filter assembly up the fill pipe as shown. And you'll need to fasten the filter housing to the back side of the uh, fill pipe housing as shown with a small push pin, which can be acquired part number 10121502, or you can find a generic uh, seven millimeter or actually it's a quarter inch push pin type uh, plastic retainer to affix the filter to the back side of the fill pipe housing 
and then uh, push your fill pipe back up into position and reattach the fill pipe housing with your torque screws and your small plastic retainer at the bottom part of the location. And uh, go ahead and raise your spare tire up, put your tools back, and you should be able to clear your codes at this point. And you can run an EVAP uh, service bay test to confirm your repairs, uh, and uh, you'll be good to go. You want to definitely a uh, couple things while you're doing this service. Uh, make sure your lines are clean at the connections. You don't want dirt entering the system as you're taking the old uh, parts off and putting the new ones on. Um, you can look at the canister at this time and check for any type of moisture or dirt contamination in the canister, which would cause restriction. Anyway, uh, that's basically how to address the issue of hard to fill gas tanks and EVAP codes on this vehicle by using the updated valve assembly. Once again, this has been The Car Doctor. Hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate the likes and subscriptions to my channel, and I wish you good luck with your repairs. See you next time.